This is Bren Antrim, a librarian here at Santa Monica College. Today we're going to do a database tour of the Oxford Reference Online Database. Keep in mind that the website is currently undergoing redesign, so it may look a little different when you go to do this search yourself, but the search steps themselves remain alike. To get to the library homepage, mouse over Student Support and click on Library between Counseling and Tutoring. Once you're there at the library homepage, scroll down a little bit. Because you're going to a specific database, you're going to click on Databases, then scroll down alphabetically till you get to Oxford Online. Not Oxford Art, Oxford Reference. This database can appear very complex when you first try to search it. That's because it is, in essence, the digitized version of an entire bookshelf full of reference works published by Oxford University Press. If you just wanted to browse, you could absolutely just do a little exploration. There's a news here, what we've done now. Look at our brand new parts of our collection. But usually when you go to a database, you don't go there to just look around. You go there because you have a subject you want to search. So right up on the right-hand side, don't worry about signing into the database. Um, if you get a login page before you get to this page, that's because only SMC people, students, faculty, staff, can actually use it. So you'll have to log in with your Canvas login to prove you're an SMC person and can use the database. Once you're there, you just type in whatever your topic might be. I'm going to go with the goddess Athena and search for that. We wait for the database to catch up with us. <laughs> and let me show you this page a little bit. On the left hand side, it will explain what you have and how you can refine or narrow your subject. In the center, it will list all of your hits. And this is over 200 hits. So I might want to narrow it down a little bit before I get started. When I take a look over here on the left hand side, it will tell me there are different reference types. Dictionaries in the English language, subject references that are specific to the discipline, timelines, and overview pages that include my search term. That's one way that I could refine or narrow my search. The other way that I could refine or narrow it is by subject. So perhaps I'm interested in the goddess Athena in classical studies, or maybe I want to see how her image is used in architecture, or perhaps I want to see how she comes up in history, or even in religion. The other way that I can refine it finally is by content set, either in quick references that give you short, succinct pieces of information like dictionaries, or a reference library that might give you a multi-page essay on your topic. And finally, if you're looking for images, you can look for ones that have pictures. So I'm going to ask it to give me information from the reference library only. When I narrow it down with that revision, it cuts it in half, basically. And it tells me some of these are about her, and some of these are about people that she was involved with in some substantive way, or even her Roman version. Okay. I can still continue to refine by subject. So if again, what I'm really interested in is classical studies, I can go there. If I'm interested in history, I can look for history by type. If I'm interested in society and culture, the same thing. So I'm going to go into Classical Studies and in two steps I've taken it from over 200 to 92. Still quite a few, but fewer that I have to look through. I can scroll down until I find something that looks interesting. Notice how they all have this little green unlocked icon here. That means you can actually access it. So I'm going to pick one, which you'll need to do for your worksheet if you're in Library 1. And when I click on that, 
it gives me the entirety of that entry, tells me what it is in, when it was published, who published it, all of the information that I need for my citation. Now at this point I have some options. Up at the top, I can print it, I can save it, I can cite it, I can email it to myself. If I decide that I want to email it to myself and I click on that icon, I give it my email address. It tells me what it wants to call it. I think that's a little bit long, so I'm going to take part of that out. And I'm just going to say this is the actual name of it. Sending it to myself. And a little bit about why. I promise the database that yes, I am not a robot. And I send it off. When it's done, it takes you back to your page. Now at that point, if I were going to cite this for my paper, I would want to get a little help from the database. And I would do that by clicking up here on the site. It defaults to APA. So if you are using MLA in your class, make sure you change that to MLA. Then you can download it, but I would just copy it, paste it into my paper, and fix it based on the template given to you by your instructor. Right off the bat, I can tell you it's in the wrong format for MLA. It's not the right font. It's not the right font size. It's not double spaced. It's missing its hanging indent. It has an extra little space and little comma here. It's got um, an extra colon in here that has to be taken out. These are supposed to be in italics, not underlined. So don't just trust the citation that the database gives you. Fix it before you put it in your paper. You don't want to lose pay, um, pay, points off of your paper because the bot screwed up your citation. Once you've gotten the information that you need from this, you go back to your results to find more information if you need to. If at any time you get stuck, on the library homepage, mousing over student support, clicking on library, you can always go to Ask a Librarian, which is a 24-7 research help button. You will either contact a Santa Monica College Librarian, or if we're not available, a college or university librarian from one of our partners in the consortium. Good luck with your research, and be well.